please welcome to the stage my mate and yours, Vern Brady. Hey. <laughs> Thanks, babe. What better way to close the show than with my high energy brand of optimistic comedy? Hello. This um, lockdown has been especially cruel to me because I was having such an amazing time in comedy before this. I'd finally got my own audience. A very specific type of person was coming to see me. And it's really interesting seeing what your own audience look like. You're always like, are they gonna be cool? Are they gonna be hipsters? Mine aren't. It's always, the men are always men who, when I look at their social media profiles, are shyly holding their pet snake up to the camera. Or it's women who, when I look at their last tweet, is always something like, wish I had the strength to hurt myself tonight. And now you can by watching me at home. Hello. Now, it's going to be a new era for the type of comedy that I do moving forwards. Because if you're a woman doing this, you're not supposed to do self-deprecating stuff. Uh, it's kind of frowned on. But you're also supposed to talk about your interests. This is tricky because my main interest now is talking about how fat I am from lockdown. Uh, I know I'm not fat, right? Fat, I would actually would be considered scary skinny in Scotland. But I did gain so much weight during lockdown that I am now the same weight Charlize Theron is every time she plays a suburban mom in a film or a serial killer. And I was feeling bad about this. And I started looking up what Christian Bale's diet was for The Machinist. And uh, then I stopped myself and I was like, no, Finn, no, don't diet. Because think how in the future, some skinny actress is gonna have the time of her life getting ready to play you in the film of your life. Um, I really hate my partner at this point of the lockdown. I watch a lot of porn. We sleep in separate rooms. I like to watch uh, Scottish porn, which is the most depressing porn I've ever seen. Don't watch it, right? If you haven't seen Scottish porn, it's more depressing than Russian porn. And at least in that, they're skinny, but it's in that bleak, we did this for a piece of bread way. Um, I have seen every Scottish porno on the internet. Some of the clips, you're like, how can I even tell these people are Scottish? There's not much dialogue. Let me tell you, I knew. I knew my own people because it was always pale, hairy white bellies smashing against each other like water balloons filled with yogurt. Every few seconds, a little voice off camera would go, oh, I. Or memorably, talk on my pubes, Rona. I clicked on this Scottish porn clip. It said, Scottish girl fucked in London. When I put it on, literally just footage of me paying a thousand pounds a month to live in Catford. Um, and I tend to watch amateur stuff rather than slickly shot professional porn because what they lack in um, uh, muscle tone or symmetrical facial features, they make up for with a large degree of enthusiasm. I've had to stop and go back to pro porn. I'll tell you why. I can't control the soundtrack in homemade sex tapes. I don't have any control over what you play in the background. I had to turn off someone's amateur porn because they were playing Everybody's Changing by Keen. Oh good, which will come first? Climax or me self-harming? Um, and I... Mm, 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 no, I don't want to do that bit. Even, even after lockdown, I'm really bored of that bit. Um, I don't judge you for making your own sex tapes. I would love to do it, but if you're gonna do one, for the love of God, would you lock up your pets beforehand, right? Lock up your pets beforehand, because the number of times I've had to just sadly close my laptop, like, nope, that's the end of that, because some cat has sauntered through the background, like, this is my time to shine, meow. Um, I... I'm a bisexual, that's the worst kind of sexual. I fucking hate saying that I'm one. I always worry people in Scotland are gonna say it's attention seeking. Uh, I really don't like it. I feel really embarrassed saying it. Look, Scotland is barely on board with pret a manger never mind alternative sexual orientations. And uh, 
But I still worry. I still worry people at home are going to be like, she's doing this because it's the easiest way of being a woke hipster. It's easier than becoming a vegan and I'm a vegetarian, which is the bisexuality of diets. Um, and the other thing is, is I, I, I have a boyfriend now, so that's that, that people are like, why do you even need to say it then? And I worry some of you are going to be sitting at home going, oh, she has a boyfriend, how predictable, good, good, she's been restored to factory settings. Um, my mum found out I was bi because uh, she saw me talking about it on a TV show. Imagine that's how your parents find out about all that. I don't know what all that is. That's me fingering an unbelievably tall lady. And um, she phoned me up after she saw the programme and she asked me about it the way only a Scottish Catholic mother can, which is by not asking you about it for 10 minutes of the phone call. Instead, it was just a series of disconnected facts. I went to Zumba today, I made a coffee cake, later I'm planting sweet peas in the garden, and then there was this terrible pause, and I knew what was coming. She went, Fern, are you a bisexual? I was like, yeah, mum, uh, you told me it was disgusting the first time you found out in my teens. No, I didn't, how dare you? Anyway, I've changed since then, because I've seen the musical Kinky Boots, and that changed everything. Isn't that amazing that art can move people in profound ways? One of Broadway's pishest musicals, Kinky Boots, turned my mother from being a homophobe into someone who pretends not to be a homophobe. <laughs> and a uh, lot of young people come to my shows now. I'm very, I seem to appeal to people in their early 20s and they're so cool about sexuality in a way people my age aren't. They see it as a spectrum and I think that's great. And I says to my wee boyfriend, now people see it this way, could you be anywhere else on the broad spectrum of sexuality? And he answered really earnestly. He was like, I've thought about it, but I honestly don't think I would like to suck a dick. I was like, Connor, <laughs> no one likes to suck a dick. <laughs> it's just the polite thing to do. And I'm interested by how much women do stuff to be polite in social and sexual situations. Like women go down on guys and swallow jizz because it's the polite thing to do. Because don't make any mistake about it, jizz is disgusting. Jizz is disgusting. I don't want to sugarcoat it. I mean, I do. I wish I could. But um, when I was at school, this is where the politeness starts. All my female friends got their first boyfriends and they were like, ladies, if his cum tastes disgusting, have you tried getting him to eat pineapple? Nom, nom, nom. Why are we treating it as if it's a chaser to a shot? The number of male friends I have that are like, you know, women should swallow because semen is actually full of amino acids and minerals. So it's very good for you. It's good for you. Right. Well, period blood has loads of iron in it. But I've never said to a guy, baby, you're looking kind of anemic. <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> Just help yourself to my lips. Anyway, uh, next bit, sauce. <laughs> um, uh, I... I'm very tired because I've been exercising frantically since the gyms reopened. And I was tired for a long time before, before lockdown. Uh, and uh, one way that I used to get around this extreme tiredness was any time I didn't want to do anything because I was knackered, I would think to myself, no, fair, no. You think you're tired now, but imagine how tired you'd be if you had a baby! <laughs> then I'd go back to sleep. Oh my God. This is a form of practicing gratitude I think I invented. I realized there's no bad scenario in my life that cannot be improved by me imagining I have a baby. Then I go back to not having a baby. Try it. It only works if you don't have a baby. <laughs> if you do, you've got to take care of that baby. You're stuck with it now. This is the most disturbing thing that's happened to me. I'd always hated babies, right? No interest in them at all. And then overnight, 
babies everywhere started to look cracking to me. Not in the sexual Prince Andrew way that implied. <laughs> babies started to look cracking to me. And I was like, I want a baby. This is so weird, right? My brain intellectually doesn't want a baby, but my body is at that sexy age where it's trying to trick me and having a baby, and it makes me think things like, but Fern, if you had a baby, it would be like a friend that could never leave. <laughs> Can you imagine being so lonely you have to shag your pals into existence? Because when you think about it, that's all a family is. That is kind of all a family is. Run out of people to attend your comedy gig. Make new ones out your hole. They'll be obligated to attend like magic. Um, I love staring at babies and talking to babies. And people think if you're a woman, that means you're actively trying to get pregnant. See, if you're a woman, anything, if you hold a baby and you're a woman and you're not swinging it around your head like that, people think that means you're trying to get pregnant. I am not. I'm riding these thoughts out till menopause. But I'm staring at a cute baby in a cafe. And this smug woman I work with said, well, Fern, if you're thinking of having a baby, have you had a fertility test? And I was like, in a sense, yes, if that's what you want to call abortion. <laughs> Truly, the fertility test, I never knew I wanted. And it's hard to be a pro-choice woman and speak out about having an abortion, because usually if you do, you have to earnestly caveat it by saying, I had one, but it's a hard decision to make. It really was a hard decision to make. For me, the hardest decision was they said to me, I lived in York at the time, and they said, you can have one in Leeds, Miss Brady, or you can have one much sooner in Doncaster. <laughs> I was like, sorry to be a snob. Am I fuck having an abortion in Doncaster? This baby will die with dignity in one of the financial centers of the UK. Leads, thank you. <laughs> so nice doing this to some comedians who all have a disgusting sense of humour and not to people who are going to chase me out of the venue after. Um, one of the things I miss the most about being an actively gigging comic is the mad messages that I get on Instagram, uh, usually from men. I was getting... I got like a, a message one morning on Instagram. I was very happy when I woke up and then I had a message from a random man in Slovakia. It said, hey, you suck and you look like a potato. <laughs> and that was it. And he was very persistent in this message. He messaged my agent to say I looked like a potato. He messaged the comedian, Dane Baptiste, who stuck up for me to say, no, she looks like a potato. On and on it went for four months. It was devastating to find out the real reason my Irish boyfriend's attracted to me. And the hardest thing about all this was every time I told one of my friends, hey, this man says I look like a potato, None of them said, oh, no, you don't. You look like an anime character or a little porcelain doll with perfect uh, big eyes. None of them said that. None of them just lied. Every single one of my friends went, well, friend, I love potatoes. That's how you know the body diversity movement's gone too far. Just lie in my face. On that, I'm going to go. Now, please, even if you didn't like my set, please support all the other acts from tonight because uh, comedy is truly fucked. I don't know if that's been stated. I am performing to an enormous empty venue. I've been Fern Brady. Enjoy the rest of your night. Good night. Fern Brady, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. <laughs>